Good morning and welcome to my presentation. My name is Madison Ross Levy and I am studying business finance this year in ISM. So starting off with my quote, um, often the difference between a successful person and a failure is not that one has better abilities or ideas, but the courage that one has to bet on one's ideas, to take a calculated risk and to act. So with this quote, I think it emphasizes why I decided to take ISM this year. It builds on the fact that a lot of people have the potential to be successful, but the difference is that one person will actually act on their idea and take the risk and go for it versus the person that will just sit back and watch and just see what happens with it versus actually taking the action. And next, a little bit about me is I'm a senior here at Frisco High School. I currently have a job at Nothing Bunt Cakes. I would like to major in finance next year in college. Some activities that I have participated in is I've cheered all throughout high school. And I also have community service involvement with some organizations such as Junior Frisco Women's League. How I got interested in finance is I'm extremely good at math and I love working with numbers. I enjoy equations and solving problems and I thought that was a really good start for finding an area of business for me to look at this year. Mainly just because I had to have somewhere to start because there's so many different areas of business. And also my strengths are I'm hardworking, I'm focused, and I love challenges. And I think that that's great with ISM because it does take the hard work, the focus, and it is a challenge. So next, what is finance? The definition of finance is the management of large amounts of money, especially by governments or large companies. So some jobs involved in finance are just going to be like chief financial <coughs> officer, financial analyst, accountant, advisor, investment banking, commercial banking. So there's a lots of different areas of finance that you can go into. You're not limited to one job. And so for my career outlook, I studied the outlook of jobs in finance. And what that means is I would look at the jobs that will become more available in the next few years, such as accountings and in the mortgage industry. Just as a result of how the market's playing out right now, that's the jobs that are expected to be a lot more positions open. So the, and it, with the career outlook, that just describes how the economy kind of influences the financial jobs. It's a, a lot of it's based off of the economy. And finding people to interview. So I completed six informational interviews. Starting off, I started with cold calls, and I did not have a lot of success with that. I think I only made about three of them, but I was not very good at them. I was really stressed out. I forgot to leave my number to call back and everything like that, so obviously there was no response there. So after that, I switched to email, which was a lot more successful with business. I, a lot of business people are constantly checking their email. And so with the email, I got quick responses. And I believe nine of them answered me back, and six of them I was able to meet with. Or I sent seven and received six. So next, I took the interview. I began the interview process. My first interview was with Lisa Thompson. She is the managing director of personal services at Pearson Partners International. So she kind of takes executive people and improves them, their portfolios, their resume, everything like that, to make them look better when they're actually applying for the job. So she has previous work in counseling, and I realized her area of studying did not really meet what I wanted to look at. I'm not really good on the whole counseling side and everything like that, and that's her biggest focus with her job. So that didn't really work out for me too well. So next I interviewed Drew Mitchell. He's the Chief Revenue Officer of the Texas Legends. And his biggest advice to me was to just build as much experience as you can. And that interview was a little bit different than the rest because it happened in the lobby of the Texas Legends, which is a very like small area with just a couple chairs. And it's open to everyone. So people are like walking by while we're sitting there talking. And it was definitely different for me. But it was really good experience because it was a different envir environment for me to talk to someone and interview them. And also with him, he introduced me to quite a few other people who happened to be working there at the time as well. So the next person I interviewed was Bud Applebaum. And he is involved in private equity at Wingate Partners LP. So in our interview, we went over the process of buying and investing in a business. And I think he gave me a lot of great information and great foundation that I would not have known otherwise. And a lot of his advice I could also use in my original work as well. And so one of the biggest subjects we touched on was the difference between private and public equity. And the difference between the two is just that public equity is going to be the stock market. You're able to invest in it and things like that. And then private is going to be private companies that are not open to the public for people to just go out and buy. And with private equity, you have to look for investments for the company versus the stock market where you get it from everyone who wants to invest. 
And my fourth interview was MJ Spence, who works at the Frisco Chamber of Commerce. She's the Vice President of Membership, and her main job is to help businesses connect with each other in Frisco. And her previous work consists of real estate. She kind of leased apartments and had them up for rent and kind of things such as that before working for the Chamber of Commerce. And I think she was really great to meet with because she had a lot of connections, but what she does didn't exactly meet what I was looking for either as I didn't really want to just take and introduce businesses to each other versus working in an actual position in a business. And my fifth interview was Shauna Massey, who she works at Green Bank in banking and loans, and the loans she focuses on are for expanding companies, so she builds their portfolios for the bank and kind of puts everything in there for them to make them look good when they propose the loan that they want. And she was really great to meet with. She was a lot of fun. She really was passionate about her job and loved talking to me, and I think that was a great experience for me because she really wanted to learn more about what I was doing, and she was really interested in sharing with me what she was doing. And my last interview was Corey Kim, who works at Ryan. She's a principal in the firm, focusing in sales and use tax, and I chose her to be my mentor. So a little bit more about Corey is she graduated from Texas A&M, specializing in accounting, she has previous work for the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts, and it does say again that she currently works for Ryan, but just to explain a little bit about what Ryan does, is um, they do comprehensive range of state, local, federal, and international tax advisory. And so what that kind of means is they do practically every tax that kind of exists, um, not just in the U.S., but also international. And so all the people that work for that business kind of have specialization in different areas with different locations and such as that. So there's going to be people who know like specifics to certain states, where like Corey focuses specifically on Texas and the sales and use tax in Texas. So it also says that what Corey does is she specializes in providing the multi-jurisdictional transaction tax services, which is audit, defense representation, tax recovery research, and also education. And so my biggest learning from my interviews, the biggest lessons that I learned were to build relationships. Uh, network as much as possible, have the confidence, challenge myself, and business is all about the connections. So what that kind of means is I need, starting now, the people I meet are kind of my basis for growing from here. So through college and stuff, um, in the next few years, I can always come back to the people I've met previously who can provide me with more and more connections that I could use. And so with business, I need to focus on that and keep those connections to make sure I'm able to use them later on if I ever need them. And for my research this year, most of my research assessments consisted of articles from Forbes, Bloomberg, Business Week, Harvard Business School, and Yahoo Finance. And the biggest focus I had was on investing money, like what to avoid, what to invest in, build a strong portfolio. The trends in the stock market are really important just because they influence everything in finance. And then also valuing a business because that ties into my original work, so I looked at articles for that to build a basis for my original work. And this is my original work, just the general kind of points of what I did in my original work. So I just took a look, uh, I took a small business for sale, one that I would be interested in and have expertise in, and found out if it would technically be a smart buy or a good investment. And with that, I created a presentation on how to decide whether or not you should buy the business and while completing that process, I actually did it with a real business. So here's my original work. So the presentation is considerations in the decision to buy and value a small business. So the overview, these are kind of the guidelines just to tell you a little bit of what I based my original work on. So with this, my purpose was to introduce basic concepts and valuation methodologies when considering the purchase of a small business. And in this presentation, I use businesses listed on bizbuysell.com, and they all have less than $250,000 of revenue. That just makes sure that I keep it small, and it's really only a website for small businesses. And then after that, I did not sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement, and I'm only using the data as listed on bizbuysell.com. So what that means is everything that I talk about is free for me to talk about. Anything I found out, I can talk about. There's no financial, anything that I have to keep hidden from you guys. And as a result, my evaluation methodology of the specific business will only allow me to decide if I should consider getting more information and signing that NDA. So this is kind of just a generalized process of valuing and buying a business. 
Um, I will go through a little bit more through the presentation as I couldn't do all the steps on this without the NDA and I'm not going through with the actual purchasing of the business. So I had to start out with deciding which business was the right one for me. I had to take my strengths and my weaknesses and figure out how I can add to the value of the business I was considering. So as a result of working at Nothing Bunt Cakes, I decided to look for a bakery. With Nothing Bunt Cakes, I thought that I'd be able to find an undervalued bakery where I'd be able to apply the concepts of a large franchise such as Nothing Bunt Cakes to improve the service, reduce the cost, improve the quality. And it's really important that you have interest in the business and knowledge of the business you're purchasing so that you can add to it because if you're not interested, it makes it a lot harder to go through with the entire process itself. And next, the things to consider were my finances. So I needed to make sure I was sticking with a small business where if I were to technically do this, I would be able to find ways to finance it from friends, family, my own savings. And I also am eligible for a small business administration loan, which is really important too. And there's like crowdfunding websites, which I'm sure all of you guys have seen before. They're on Facebook, they're everywhere. And so the goal in purchasing a bakery would be to find a business that allowed me to generate additional profitability through the improvements in service cost reduction and higher quality. So the research, things to consider. First of all, the marketplace. For the marketplace, so you have not yet met this bakery yet, but it is located in Collin County. So I had to research both Frisco and McKinney and the area where it falls, looking at the demographics, the high family gross income, fast growth, low employment, things such as that, that make a business successful in this area. And a good point is the DFW Metroplex has one of the highest casual dining per capita spending ratios. So that's really important because that means the, the bakery has great potential. So looking at the marketplace, the location falls right on the McKinney and Frisco line, which allows the business to obtain customers from both parts of Collin County. So looking at McKinney, the median age is 32. The population growth from 2002 to 2014 was 160%. High school graduate or higher, 92%. Bachelor's degree or higher, 46%. And with Frisco, it's um, even more growth. So the population growth from 2000 to 2009 was 240%. It's one of the top 100, 100 places to live in the US. We have a strong economy and corporate vitality, which just means that Frisco and McKinney is a great place to start a business or own a business because so many people are willing to put money into the business and people are willing to spend money in this area, which is just great for the business itself because that means people will go and pay for cake and pay for expensive decorating and stuff, stuff such as that. And so moving on with that, understanding the target business, things you really want to consider is stuff such as how long have they been in business, their reputation, how broad or narrow is their customer list, what are their reasons for selling, how long have they been at their current location, you also, a big part of this is obviously looking at their numbers, the purchasing price, and also the inventory. Is it a franchise? Everything's really important. You really want to know as much as you can about the business before you're going to decide to buy or invest in it. So here's the business being considered. The identified growing specialty bakery is based in Collin County, and in researching bakeries in Collin County, we believe the business for sale is Sweet Art Bakery in McKinney, Texas. At notice we say, we believe it, We're, they do not give you the name when, unless you sign the NDA. So that's actually classified information unless um, you find it yourself. So what we did is we Googled the bakeries and stuff such as that to find the name. So that's the one we believe that it is. And this business was established in 2007. It is not a franchise, it's a single owner. Business is open until 4 p.m. daily, 2 p.m. on Saturday, Saturdays. They have little advertising, good ratings, a really great website, and they relocated in 2012. So based off of this, it looks like a really great business. So next we have to look at the actual numbers, which when you get the sheet from Biz by Sell, it looks like the one in the binder here, and it gives you the numbers and a little summary about the business itself. And it doesn't really point out the bad points at all. You kind of have to figure that out for yourself. So the publicly available financials of the business, they're asking for $125,000. Their gross income is $213,000, cash flow is $44,175, the furniture, fixture, and equipment is $750, which is included in the asking price. The inventory, which is $22,740, is not included in the asking price. 
And that's a major point because that means the asking price of 125000 is going to go up with that inventory because it's not included. And then the rent for them is going to be 27000 annually. And they have a triple net lease, which is just kind of important because this is the definition of it, which just means that they have to pay for all the costs relating to the location, such as the rent fee. Um, so they pay for the net real estate taxes, the leased asset, the net building insurance, and the net common area maintenance, which is just important to know because what you're paying for is not just the space itself. It's the actual entire, business, uh, entire structure itself. And the simple financial valuation that we completed on this is you want to look at the business and divide the asking price by the free cash flow. That's just a really general way to look at if it's a good number or not. So with this one, we got 2.8, which is the asking price is 2.8 times the free cash flow, which is a great number because you want it to be around two, two or three. So that looks good. And which it says there, anything under three is considered fair. And the FF&E, which is the furniture, fixtures, and equipment, appears to be insignificant. However, this number seems understated based on my experience because the furniture, fixtures, and equipment should include stuff such as ovens, prep tables, refrigerators, freezers that would far exceed $750. So that seems kind of odd. And then, um, so after you see that, you would want to do a complete discounted cash flow model which involves the spreadsheets and the debits and credits and everything like that. But since we signed the NDA, we could not see that. So what, if you were interested in investing with the, in this business, you'd want to continue with that and look at those sheets to see where those numbers go specifically. So the next step in this would be to sign the NDA, get the balance sheets and everything, and then analyze all of those. So we actually went and visited the bakery and so this is their storefront here, Sweet Art Bakery and Cafe. And that's the inside of the bakery on the left there, and then that's their hours on the right. And it's kind of hard to tell from the pictures itself, but the storefront is very large, and they have a very small kind of kitchen area, and their hours are not very good either. So those are some points we're going to touch on in the next couple slides here with the conclusions. So after evaluating the financials of the business being considered, as well as visiting it, I have come to the conclusion that this business would not be the best investment for me personally. So the location, it's poorly located off of a main road. It is not easy to find. It's designed wrong with the large storefront and they have a small kitchen area, which seems very odd because you'd think it would be the other way around. And then the bakery does have great potential. With the right location, it w we'll see, it would require a new location, but with the right location, it could bring in a lot of revenue. But the problem is you need someone who's going to be able to put in that extra money to do that. And then the lease itself, to get out of that lease, would cost over 50000 alone. So there's a lot of additional things that go with it as well that you wouldn't necessarily see right off the back of the paper. And the last conclusion here is the bakery, the bakery currently closes at 4 p.m. Each, each day and 2 p.m. on Saturdays. It's also closed on Mondays and Sundays, which loses a lot of customers. And from that, you would think that there's great potential to expand and get a lot more money by increasing those hours, but what you don't know is that it could be hard to keep the staff that's currently there. A lot of them are part-time workers, there's only about four of them, so a lot of them have their family and other stuff so that they may not be willing to keep to expand the hours, and which would be really difficult because without them you don't have the decorators or anything that the store requires itself. And in the advertising, the bakery does have little advertising, which is also a great opportunity to increase your customer base, but that would also require more money as well, because you'd have to put the money in to expand your advertising and promotions, which would decrease the, decrease the free cash flow, but as a result, it could increase the cash flow. So it kind of has like a teeter-totter kind of relationship here, because you could put more money in and get more money out, but it could also go the other way around, but you do have to have the person buying it has to have the, avail the possibility of investing that money to increase the advertising, which not everyone does. And my future plans, I hope to attend the University of Texas in Austin in the fall of 2015. I want to major in business specializing in finance. And with ISM, I hope to learn more about business throughout the year and find out if it's something I'd like to continue to pursue throughout college and after I'm finished with school. So thank you for listening to my presentation.